The following podcast is a presentation of This is Infamous. Listener discretion is advised. Thank you for tuning in to a brand new edition of The Lifted Embargo. I'm your host, Billy Donnelly. As always, you can find my work, as usual, at joeblow.com, as well as This Is Infamous. And this is the show where we review films. So we review the latest movies that are going to be hitting your local neighborhood movie theaters uh, in the upcoming days, or in the case of this week, something that's actually just hitting midweek, um, and sort of break it down for you, let you know what we thought of it, what we liked, what we didn't like. Every week, I like to bring in a brand new critic or sort of a rotating crop of critics uh, to give you a fresh perspective, a fresh state of mind, and a different opinion other than just my own. And uh, for this week, I managed to do so as I normally do. So uh, joining me on the show this week, you can find her work at freshfiction.tv as well as Sassy Mama in LA. And you can read her on Twitter at Lula May Bell. Courtney Howard joins me this week. So Courtney, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, we're going to be talking about two films this week. Uh, the first will be Nerve, and then we'll also cycle to Bad Moms. Uh, just for the record, um, there is one other slightly larger film coming out this week as well, and that would be Jason Bourne. We are not talking about it on this particular episode, uh, particularly because I don't recall seeing the previous three, uh, and um, I did not have time to binge all three of them before going to see the now fourth film in the franchise. So to be fair to the film, I thought it would be best to just not see it uh, and also then not talk about it on the show. So if you're looking for reviews of Jason Bourne, I'm sure there are no shortage of them out there in the world. By all means, go ahead and find them. You just will not find one on this particular show. With that said, um, Courtney, uh, since you are a new guest to the show, for anyone who may be out there unfamiliar with your work, uh, let's sort of lay out your credentials. So um, mm -hmm. how is it that you got involved writing about film? What got you started writing uh, film criticism? How did you sort mm -hmm. of get involved in the world of uh, just film writing, period? Mm -hmm. um, well, I was sucked into film and like, just having to just immerse myself in the world when I was like six and I saw E.T. in the movie theater and I was just like taken away by it. And so I've always watched movies. And um, when it came time for college, I thought I was going to be more on the production side of filmmaking and I wanted to be an assistant director. So I went to school for that and went to school for just, you know, just film in general and took film theory classes and such. Um, there's still a lot of, uh, holes in my film history. So there's still a lot of big movies I haven't seen, um, that need to be, uh, still seen, but not anymore on the production side. And then things just, you know, life just happened and, uh, it's really hard to find a job in the production side and, you know, it demands different things of you. And I just sort of changed gears a little bit. And, um, everybody had always encouraged me to start writing about films and they've always, like, sort of just on a personal level, uh, sought out my opinion of things. So um, it wasn't until, like, the advent of Twitter came around where um, I worked at another site before that's now defunct. Uh, but the editor there had seen, you know, a few of my tweets and liked my voice and said, you know, have you ever written professionally about film? And so I was just like, not really, but, you know, I'll try. Let's just try this for a while and see if I have fun. And I loved it. And, you know, of course, like anything, you have to hone your craft and um, there was a lot of growing pains there. But, you know, I eventually got there and felt confident and, um, you know, things just took off from there. And that was about six years ago. Yeah, about six years ago, I think I started. And so it's now like, you know, I crave it. I love it. I love doing this. Um, I love writing about film. I love saying my opinion. And, um, yeah, so... That's how that's how things happen for me. Well, we'll get your opinion out there today uh, for this particular <laughs> episode. Um, two 
very different films that we're going to talk about. However, they do share uh, some commonality as they are uh, female-centric, female-driven. Um, the first film that we'll talk about is the film Nerve, um, which is uh, a thriller uh, directed by Henry Joost and Ariel Shulman of Catfish fame. Uh, this one stars Emma Roberts, Dave Franco, uh, Juliette Lewis to a degree, um, and basically features a high schooler uh, sort of sort of uh, sheltered a little bit, uh, a little bit of a uh, sort of, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, Straight lace. Yes. Straight lace, uh, play by the rules. Yes. Uh, life on the sideline. <laughs> yes. Very, very by the book, by the rules, uh, high schooler who at the prompting of some of her friends decides to enroll in an online game called Nerve, uh, hence the title, um, where you are either a player or a watcher. The watchers, uh, very voyeuristic, watch other people basically complete online dares for cash prizes. Uh, and ultimately, the goal of the game is to continue to accumulate as much money as you possibly can and ultimately uh, win the rules are not as clearly laid out uh, within, uh, within the movie. But when the dares start to become slightly more dangerous and V played by Emma Roberts starts to get in over her head. Uh, she realizes that uh, ultimately she's going to have to play to win the game, whatever that really means. Um, so I, I think that's about as baseline as I can get uh, as far as nerve is, uh, as far as nerve is concerned. So Courtney nerve, what did you think of this film? I probably liked this for different reasons than you did. I'm not sure if you liked it or not. I watched your interview with Emma Roberts, which was great. Um, but I thought this movie was so – it was not terrible, terrible. But for me, it was so – one of those movies where it's like a guilty pleasure, where it's so bad, it's good. So, like, I liked it for its utter ridiculousness. Like, I thought it was, you know, mockable in some parts, but I thought it was insanely rewatchable. Uh, for those same reasons. So like, you know, her wrapping Wu-Tang Clan's cream uh, while getting a tattoo inspired by a Virginia Woolf novel. Um, I just let my mind wander. I was like, oh, probably because Sylvia, Sylvia Plath was, you know, probably too morose for that character. Um, I loved her green dress, like, you know, just on a girl fashion level. Like I was magpieing out on that sparkle of the dress. Um, I thought it was hilarious that both of her guy friends like did not know how to parallel park in the city. Like it's so innocuous, but I was just like drawn to this. Like I couldn't focus on anything else. <laughs> see, I like movies for the weirdest reasons, but you know, um, I thought the whole thing was kind of a, sort of a predictable lead up to, um, the whole like watchers, there's going to be this whole ethical moral statement on the watchers. And I don't feel like at the climax, it really got to that point of changing, like if the filmmakers were going to like be out to change like trolls, you know, hearts and minds on these things, like their statement was a little bit weak. And the, by the third act, it started to really fall, like really fall apart for me where I was like, okay, I'm ready for this to end. And everything started to feel really rushed too. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not sure I like Emma Roberts and I like Dave Franco separately, but together, I'm not sure if their chemistry worked. I don't know if you have opinions on that, but um, so I didn't really feel a sizzle or a heat between them, but I think they're adorable. Um, but... I mean, I think, I think they're, I mean, ultimately in, in look, we'll, we'll get into spoilers. So let's just lay out like the spoiler, the blanket spoiler warning for this movie and the rest of the show. So if, if you're like, I want to go into nerve fresh, uh, just pause and come back and then be like, Oh, so that's what they were talking about. Um, but, um, I mean, their, their partnership is also sort of a matter of convenience. Um, you know, they need each other to a certain degree and, you know, when they meet up, it's this very awkward, um, it's very awkward, just sort of encounter. Um, and which I still found that endearing. Like that's endearing because well, it's very random. It's, yeah, it's very, yeah. it's very random, and 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 in that way, it does feel sort of authentic because the way that they do cross paths, um, is is so bizarre that 
everyone involved would be embarrassed uh, in the moment. Um, and on, on top of that, you know, because they meet up with, with her being a part of this game, they meet up and they sort of become like this hot item in the game. People enjoy watching them put sort of push each other uh, to, to, to the next level. And, and I, I think in that way, like I didn't really have a problem with, with their partnership. Uh, I think I like the film a lot more than you did. Um, I, I am sort of fascinated with the way that we use the internet at this point in time. Um, you know, and, and, and we have sort of discussions about this all the time, which is like, is the internet good or bad? Um, you know, and, and, and sometimes you look at it and you go, well, why? Like the internet's a pretty awful place. Like it's a real, just it's a real just cesspool, of like just just shittiness uh, <laughs> at, at, at all times, and 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 that's really what I what what sort of struck a chord with me watching Nerve is sort of the themes and ideas that it plays with. Now I I can understand where somebody would would come at it and say, well, I don't know that it really hit a hit a home run in in that that degree here or there. There are some some weaker areas, but I think sort of dealing with the idea of you know, how we use social media, um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, where we just sort of broadcast our lives uh, out into the world and sort of what does that even really mean? Why do we do that? Uh, And on top of that, sort of the voyeuristic, uh, the aspect, you know, because you have the exhibitionist side of that as well as the voyeuristic Mm -hmm. side, which is people watching you do things and we're, I mean, we're doing this podcast, but we're no more interesting than other people out there in the world. Um, but for some reason, people feel the need to live vicariously through other people who are out there watching their videos on YouTube or watching their periscopes or reading their tweets. And, you know, we're in very in a, in a number of ways we're we're very connected, but at the same time, we're very disconnected from one another because we all our interactions are through screens or, or likes or retweets or or hearts on our Instagram pictures or whatever. Sure, so, sure. So Finding in, the self worth in that. Yes. Yeah. The, you know, the, the, this very hollow sense of validation that comes with mm-hmm. all of that. So, so in that respect, I thought Nerve Play with some really interesting ideas, and you know, I think it it deals with it in a way that. I mean, I'm probably out of the demographic that it's shooting for, <laughs> um, but I was still able to, to find some enjoyment in it. I think it's more sure, shooting sure. for, you know, the the younger demographic, maybe 16 to like 24. And, and, and in a way, you know, you'll have some things that are dumbed down, but I think it's trying to address it in a way that maybe is thought provoking for some people. Um, I found Emma Roberts likable enough, uh, <laughs> plenty likable as her character and, yeah, it's a, it's a it's sort of just a trope, but you know, very much this this once again, as we mentioned, the straight laced character breaking out and sort of pushing the envelope, and you know, she's got to sort of be the savior. Um, but I, I I liked it while I watched it. I had a smile on my face, and mm-hmm. uh, and and I felt entertained while I watched it. So in that respect, um, I would recommend this film to somebody. I, I it's 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 short, it's tight, it's quick. I think there's some some tense moments when you when you deal with some of the dares um, mm-hmm. that yeah my palms were sweating like yeah because some of the dares anything that involves heights that really gets me so like the height sequences like my palms were sweaty so you know it had me during those se- like during those sequences yeah sure. I mean, yeah there's this, there's this great sequence where the dare is to walk between two buildings on a via ladder um mm-hmm. and suspended I, like 50 feet up to yeah. you know 100 feet up or whatever it was yeah and 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 it's for like i mean it's for like 10 grand or something like that mm-hmm. and, and and it very much it plays into uh a reality tv aspect too which is you know what would you do for money you know how 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 low mm-hmm. would you sink for money would you eat cockroaches for 10 grand mm-hmm. would you climb this ladder and put your life on the line for 10 grand. Um, and sort of just how we value each other, uh, as human beings when we, when we see that, because the watchers ultimately represent us, people who, who want to see the train wreck, um, without getting involved in it, you know, and, and watching other people put themselves, uh, in these precarious situations, 
uh, at a distance for our own entertainment. So, so in that respect, I, that that's really where where nerve uh, struck a chord with me is is dealing with sort of some of those themes and ideas um, that I'm really just sort of fascinated by. So what I mean, did the themes play any part uh, in 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 sort of the way you viewed the film? Did any of that resonate with you while you were watching it? Right. Yes, it did. Like I got what they were going for. Like it, it's you know, its goals are pretty obvious, and they they were to me at least. But I don't feel like it, t- it came together and tied together in a like ultra smart manner. And I feel like this has been done before in different movies in different kind of incarnations, maybe not as coherently, um, as nerve does, but I feel like it just didn't quite get there. Actually saying something like I felt like it just kind of posits these ideas and then just leaves them there. And, if they do try to come back to it, it's not, it's not quite as effortless as, you know, I would have hoped their resolutions would be. Um, and then it just got too goofy for me to even like care about like a satisfying, you know, resolution and the themes and ideas. And I mean, there are some goofy stuff. Um, her, she's a friend, um, who's like a pseudo hacker. Um, that's kind of, odd placement uh in the yeah, film like he's Tommy, just Tommy's friend uh, uh who hacks on the dark web yes and, uh, <laughs> and the whole like the thing that was really making me angry was the whole like portrayal of the female friendship because at first it starts out pretty strong like the girl's like I would never like the would she's V has the crush on that player the football player and her friend kind of goes over there a little bit to embarrass her friend but not really her intent seemed to be genuine of like, Hey, do you like my friend? My friend likes you. Why don't you go hook up kind of thing? Well, yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a way to like, stuff. it's a way to like push her friend, you know, to like sure, try sure, to sure. goad her right. into doing something on her own. Right. But then later on in the film, when, um, uh, Ian has that dare to kind of get, uh, like so fast, like it's not a, like, I'm trying to protect my friend. It's like a, Sid is so awful, blah, blah, blah. Like she just starts like going off on her friend. And I was like, well, that was quick. She sells out her friends so quickly. And then they make up faster than like you could say best friend, then you can abbreviate best friends forever. So it's like, wow, okay. I mean, I I could buy that to a certain level because I've seen, um, I mean, because typically I've seen things like that happen between friends. Um, because when you're s- such good friends with somebody, you, you hold back a lot, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Um, you know, there, there are things that may bother you about someone else that your friend, I think you allow them to get away with that stuff a little bit more. And then ultimately sometimes there's this explosion and things just come out that you shouldn't have said, but you did because they've been just, you've been bottling them up for so long uh, and that it's just like a verbal explosion of awful onto your friend. And then you just go, Oh, I was, I'm sorry. I was an asshole. Uh, I'm sorry too. And then, <laughs> and then you kind of just, you kind of just make up, I guess. Um, so, I mean, that, that stuff didn't really bother me uh, too much. It's just like, there's little things. Um, there, there's, there's, the, the, like the, I, I still don't like. I don't get ties. Uh, the man, the man bun, Mad Max extra tie. The like machine gun Kelly like, at his yes. in his finest role, probably ever. Uh, yeah, I still don't get what exactly his motivations were. Like those seem to switch on a dime. Like he's in there for a long time because he wants to win, and then you know you've already done the spoiler alert. But like spoiler. And it's like, wait a second, what is he, like, he wants to win this game. He could have clearly still won, like, it just didn't make any sense to me. Like, none of his motivations made any sense. Like, it seemed to be one way, and then it switched, and then it switched again, and it was just like, I don't even care at this point. It's so disposable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there, there are characters that seem to exist um, 
for the convenience of the film. Uh, and, and they do what is necessary f- for the film uh, at the time that they're required to do it. Um, but for me, I think I, I, I wrote a lot. I, I'm sort of ride or die. Uh, with Emma Roberts and Dave Franco in this movie, in this movie, which is weird because they they kind of have like a ride or die dare um, that they have to go through um, uh, in this in this sort of motorcycle uh, sequence that that is once again I thought one of those sort of tense things that that kept me on on the hook, um, you know. And, and there's a few of them. There's a few of those dares that I think keep me on the hook throughout this film. Uh, the the themes and ideas keep me on the hook throughout this film. I like the look of the film too. I think mm-hmm. I think uh, Henry Juice and Ariel Shulman. I think they do a really good job of crafting sort of this technologically aware modern film. Um, mm-hmm. You know, by calling in sort of the text messages and the mm-hmm. um, the way that we view content on our phones or on the tablets or or and, and the way we sort of use those to connect. I think they just sort of nail that aspect um, in order to make the film feel like it's happening, you know, today or, or two minutes from now or, or, or whatever. Um, so in that respect, you know, I, I think that the strengths outweigh the weaknesses. Yeah. Are there some weak spots? I, I'll, I'll grant you that. Uh, but, and but, I still like that said, I still love the weaknesses for what they are. Yeah. Like, cause I feel like this is so like for me, I would watch this again in a heartbeat in a heartbeat. Yeah, I would. I would too. This is like, I mean, I don't know that I'd go right out now and watch it, but this, but uh, and and I liked it, but but this is this is a movie that like if it was a Saturday afternoon and it was like on TNT, um, you know the way the TNT just replays movies all the time, I would watch the shit out of this movie. Like <laughs> like I would like I would watch it, and then it would be on Sunday at like six o'clock, and I'd be like. Well, I'm, I'm still That's not doing okay. anything important. I, I enjoyed it enough. I mean, I would watch this the way that I've seen, like, The Negotiator 437 times. Uh, I would just – I would watch this movie a lot. Uh, I think the more I watch it, I would grow to love it even more. Uh, and, and that's going for somebody who really likes it. Um, but, yeah, I, I, it's harmless. You know, it's harmless. I think it's, I think it's thought-provoking enough. Uh, and I think as far as the, the interactions between Emma Roberts and Dave Franco, I think they do plenty to keep you on the hook throughout. And once again, it's only, it's like 96 minutes. So it's like super tight, um, which is, it's super tight when it needs to be. We already talked sort of about these extraneous parts that exist for the convenience of the film. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I found it, I found it to be enjoyable to watch and, um, you know, and and like, when we talk about this all the time, sort of when we discuss films um, and and how how some people, I, I think, approach films a little bit exhaustingly. Um, not every movie has to be like Citizen Kane. Um, they're not all, they're not they're not all going to be masterpieces with like deep rooted themes that like make you contemplate the meaning of life. Um, I, what are you talking about? This is the Citizen Kane of GoPro <laughs> movies. What this, are you talking about? <laughs> this is the Citizen Kane of GoPro movies. This is the Citizen Kane of um, I guess Periscope <laughs> themed movies. Um, uh, I mean, look, it's well, it's it's pretty well made. Uh, like 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 that's one of the, that's that like that's one of the points that I that I raised just a, just a few moments ago was like it's it's pretty well made as far as what it's trying to be, the aesthetic that it's trying to create, um, mm-hmm. and in the world that it's there's trying a good to energy. In. There's a good energy and good vibe there. Yeah, it's 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 very fast paced and. I mean, I, I dig it. I, I, I make no excuses about it. I'm not, I won't even call this a guilty pleasure. I will own it. I enjoy the hell out of this movie, <laughs> and and I make no excuses for it. <laughs> so, um, All right. so yeah. So, so with, that, with that said, uh, I think that's about enough on nerve. <laughs> um, the uh, <laughs> the other film that we're going to discuss uh, this this episode is Bad Moms. Um, Bad Moms. Uh, stars Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, and Katherine Hahn, as well as uh, Annie Momolo, Jay Hernandez, Jada Pinkett Smith, and Christina Applegate, and tells the tale of sort of this this middle class trying to hold it together, mother of two. Uh, her husband's kind of lazy. She's trying to do everything she can for her career, for her kids, for her family to hold it all together. 
And when something ultimately is the straw that breaks the camel's back, Mila Kunis says, fuck it, and <laughs> engages in just sort of me behavior, uh, kicking back a little bit, throwing away the pressures and the expectations, and ultimately becoming, quote unquote, a bad mom. Um, there's a PTA president uh, sort of subplot that also goes along, and that's sort of the driver of the, the story. Now, but ultimately, it's sort of the coming together of three mothers who learn that they actually love motherhood, um, but that they're tired of some of the bullshit that comes with it. Uh, I think that's about his baseline, <laughs> as I can say. John Lucas and Scott Moore direct this, uh, best known as the writers of The Hangover. And um, that film, this film comes out this week. So, uh, Courtney, Bad Moms, how did this film play for you? Um, this one played surprisingly well. I'm not a huge fan of John Lucas and Scott Moore's previous movies, especially how they write women. I think is very, uh, they're either, women are either two types of people. They're either Madonnas or they're whores. So there's like no in between. And so I was very worried to see how they portray women. But I know from talking to them, because they also did 21 and Over, at that junket, they mentioned their wives a lot. And so it sounded like they had a lot of influence on this as well. Um, but I liked it more, I think, the more I think about this, I like it more for what it stands for than what it is. Like, I love that there's a, a raunch com out there that's female driven. And I hate that I have to bring that up, but that's a special highlight in, you know, a summer filled with like these very macho movies out there that there's one that's driven by women and they're just as raunchy as men are. And, um, I think it's actually, um, the writer director's most enlightened work. I think they put a lot of good things out there, uh, with the messages that they create in the movie. So I really enjoyed that and seeing that. Like when uh, there's a scene where Mila Kunis's character, Amy, lectures her son. Um, and I just thought like everybody in our screening audience was like, yes, like you go, you take down, you know, this like overprivileged white male that you're raising. And she basically <laughs> gives him a what for, you know? Um, so like everybody was like close. To have that kind of thing in there, I thought that was really well done. Um, I will say some of the conflict doesn't work, didn't work for very well for me, um, especially like, and I was talking about it with somebody else today. Like, even as a woman, I'm still sort of sick of seeing this sort of Amy Poehler, Tina Fey. We still have to embrace our bullies, kind of thing. I think that in this movie, um, the PTA president played by uh, Christina Applegate, like her character is pretty evil and she's doing stuff that would like, she's trying to get her rival, uh, Mila Kunis's characters, kid like kicked out of school for like, you know, drug offenses and stuff. <laughs> and that's stuff that you could like harbor a serious grudge about. And then, you know, spoiler alert, if you want to stay clean for bad, bad moms, skip this part. But, like, at the end, they become friends. And it's, like, that felt very rushed to me as well. And it's, like, no, she tried to, like, really harm your kid. Like, you got to be a little mama bear about some things. So that sort of, like, I feel like you could still get away. Like, you don't have to love the mean girls. And that's okay. You can have a movie that has that message and still be okay, I think. But... Yeah, I would agree with you as far as sort of the end of the film, which is like, you know, it, it's sort of this coming together of like, I understand what you're going through. And as a result, yeah. I forgive you. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know that that part lands as well because of how the rest of the film builds. But I will say this about the rest of the film. I love the hell out of this movie. I laughed a great deal. Um, I almost peed my pants twice. Uh, <laughs> um, I I mean, granted, I, I, I did consume a couple of drinks before the film and then I went in yeah. and that <laughs> probably didn't help, uh, you know, my, my bladder situation. Um, but, but I laughed a lot 
And and ultimately, I mean, that's one of the judge the, the best judges of a yeah. comedy is did sure. it make you laugh? Yes. And I found myself laughing consistently and heavily throughout this film. Now, mm -hmm. I, I I think I think what's interesting is that um, you know I, I think. There, there's two different levels to the to the film. One, there's sort of this very realistic level to the film, mm -hmm. which is um, there are pressures on on parents these days. I think that the not that people didn't necessarily didn't have before, and there's ultimately a, a rush to judgment on you know how parents parent their kids, and we sort of people view it from this very. Um, ivory tower perspective you know everybody wants to view something f as them being superior and as a result when people make a mistake they just look down and they judge upon it and and i think we saw that you know fairly recently with um you know you had the 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 kid who who climbed into the gorilla uh the gorilla enclosure at the zoo and everybody judged that mom for how that happened mm -hmm. um and then mm -hmm. you know the 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 poor kid with the with the gator in disney world and people started to judge that parent and they go oh well if i was there or if that was my kid i wouldn't have done that or i would have done this differently so i think bad mom sort of explores some of that and the pressure that parents face right now um particularly mothers as far as how they parent their kids and and, and how they mm -hmm. sort of navigate uh the imperfect science of parenting um and then on the other level i think this film has uh, very broad characters that are easily identifiable. So, you know, Mia Kunis' character is easy, I easily identifiable. You sort of know somebody like that. Somebody who's trying their hardest, but ultimately, like on Friday, they just want to drink a lot of wine because, like, they're just through. They're just through with the week. And, uh, you know, Kristen Bell's character is just sort of oh, this. Oh, she's hilarious. You know, th but it's this character who has, like, just tons of kids. Her, her husband yeah. doesn't really help out. Out. Uh, she's like at her breaking point and it, but she's just a relatively nice person like every time you see her she'll just have a smile on her face and you're just like I don't understand how you do this without murdering someone every single day um, and then Catherine Hahn who by the way <laughs> can we get this woman a movie of her own by now um, thank you because this, thank you. I mean every time you see her she is just killing it um, but she plays sort of that single mom who doesn't give a shit. Uh, you know, the one who's yeah. like her kids sort of grown and she's just like, ah, oh, well, it'll be all right. Um, I, you know, maybe I can get laid tonight if I go out at the bar and, and try hard enough. Um, but you recognize these characters. Uh, Christina Applegate is sort of this queen bee PTA president who like the PTA is like that's her life. And she, like she's really into it. And like really controlling over it and like thinks that that's her whole sense of being. I know these people. I've seen them in action. <laughs> and mm -hmm. as a result, Bad Mom's really connected with me because it, it does uh, sort of up the the wildness to them um, in, in almost cartoonish fashion. Um, but you do identify with who these characters are, what their motivations are. And it's nice to see them sort of come together it's nice to see this team like this team of misfits come together yeah. in order to take yeah. on like the the ultra perfect you know overachieving pinterest mom in christina applegate yeah the uh, everything with kiki and carla i laughed so hard um the whole scene that's at the mirror uh when they're talking about like you know, guy's penis and stuff like that whole scene <laughs> just had me in tears. Um, there's an innocuous line. I can't remember. I think Carla calls uh, Kiki's husband, Kent Ike Turner. Yes. And I was <laughs> dying. And I was the only one in the theater laughing at that. And I was like, and I was in like a screening, uh, a junket screening. And so they invited a bunch of mom bloggers and, you know, and then they had the, you know, uh, the, uh, the other uh, journalists there, too. And so, like, I was sitting next to, like, a group of mom bloggers, and they were just totally lost on that kind of thing. But it was really connecting with them on the, like you said, on the parent level, on the parenthood. Like, like the lady sitting next to me would not, like, it was annoying, and then it was a good judge, a uh, like, good gauge for me to hear of her going, like, Oh, that is so you, like to her friend <laughs> next to her. And like, oh, that mom is so blah, 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 don't you think? And like, 
you know, seeing all these like different things. Yes, that got old real fast, if that's your question. So like <laughs> after five minutes, I wanted to turn to her and be like, shut up, just enjoy the movie. But, you know, it, it was funny to see, you know, it really connecting with a lot of the moms that were in the audience too. But, um, but yeah, I thought it was, it, it hits the right marks in the right spots. The thing that, the other thing that I didn't quite vibe with is, um, Sure, her husband in the movie too. The whole thing with the husband, um, you know, like you said, he was this lazy, like you know, guy who's just laying around, and it winds up being that he's cheating on his wife with online, um, with online cheating, yeah. yes, online cheating, yes. And so she kicks him out, and then you know, of course, there's the widowed hot guy at school that you know, every all the moms are like really lusting over, and you know, Mila can go for it because she's single. And so they have the scene where she gets with the hot guy and then the scene immediately following that is her husband saying like, let's try to make this work and let's go to counseling and it's them at the counseling office. And I just felt like that was unnecessary because we've already been shown her, you know, fucking the hot guy and we don't even give a shit anymore about her trying to like we don't even give a shit about the the lazy husband anymore we do not want it to see it work out so that was like an extra 10 15 minutes where i was like if you had cut that the energy flow of this movie would be just pristine so that was another problem i had with it it just felt like it really it just felt really unnecessary i yeah, didn't care I'm about I'm okay yeah, with so. driving home the point of what a shithead he is, though. Like, was, uh, he is, we already got that. Though. We already got that. I'll double down on it. I'll double down. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, um, I already understood it. I Get mean, with a hot guy. <laughs> Um, a widower, man. I mean, I mean, uh, the the thing that that is that that I find you know really interesting about this is that more of these comedies should exist, and yes. and you know, and and it's 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 always weird that when they happen, people are surprised. They're like, "Oh, I can't believe these women are so funny." Um, yeah. yeah. First of all, they do exist. Uh, they're not unicorns. Um, and yeah. secondly, if you put forth the effort and you give them really good material, they'll make it work. Um, you know, and I think we sort of we sort of saw that a few years ago with bridesmaids, and that sort of I think propelled more towards this sort of raunchy um, female comedy that that we've sort of seen uh, really snowball in, in the last few years. But I mean, look, and even I've, before that too, the sweetest thing, which yes. also starred Christina Applegate, that was another like. You know, pioneer that was pretty dirty. That was pretty dirty. Yeah, <laughs> was, yeah. I mean, there's a and whole. I think there's a whole Jenny penis song. Had one too. <laughs> yeah. So like these things happen, but they're not quite as frequently as they should be happening. But then at the same time, it's like we shouldn't have to point this out. This should be something that's more commonplace than it actually is. I mean, it's it's weird because of the fact that. Um, I mean, and, and it kind of just comes down to like the way society views these things is that like it's okay for yeah. men to go out and be like, you know, dickheads and, and behave badly. And when they come home, it's like, oh, well, that, that's that's just that's just guys being guys. Um, but look, I've hung out with plenty of women uh, in my day and they can be just as dirty. Uh, when, when it yeah. comes to discussion, when it comes to language, I mean, they can hang if they really want to. And, you know, you brought up, I mean, there's, there is, there's a great, there's a great bit in this movie about uncircumcised penises and it's hilarious. And, and, and look, and I'm a guy and I watched this and I found it incredibly funny. So this isn't a film I think that's just for women. Like if you're a guy and you go, oh, it's just, it's bad moms. It's just for women. That's incorrect. That's wrong. Funny is funny. And this movie yeah. is incredibly funny, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, whether you're somewhere in between. Um, it doesn't matter. You're going to find a lot of humor, I think, in this film. If not, your sense of humor may be broken <laughs> because I think there's there's just a ton. And and yeah, Catherine Hahn is an all star in this movie. And every time she's on the screen, she just commands your attention with this just very larger than life, very out there character. I would watch a movie about that lady. I'd watch a movie about that yeah, lady's right? life. That whole character. Right? Watch, you, you give me her origin story. <laughs> yeah, give me the bad mom's prequel Carla where it's prequel. just about Carla. And I'll be, I'll pay money like easily <laughs> to go watch that thing. 
Um, but yeah. but yeah, I look, I I cannot say enough good things about this movie. I love this movie. I think the rewatchability on this movie um, is 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 really strong. I think the quotability on this movie is really strong. I think this is one of those movies that people are going to watch over and over and over, and you're going to find like women quoting it back to each other. Uh, in the way that, like, I quote stepbrothers to people. Uh, I think that's where, like, Bad Moms is going to rate uh, in, in sort of its legacy. And, and yeah, I can't recommend this film enough for people to go say. I recommend it a little bit less than that, but I think it's the perfect movie to kind of grab your friends, like, girlfriends, guy friends, and just have a good time at the movies. Just let it go and, like, just have fun. And I think it's just a really fun and energetic movie. And um, I, I don't know. I think it's a, it's something that you need to see with a group of people and laughing with a group of people. I mean, I, I would go and sit in a theater myself and watch this and like, <laughs> like Max Katie, like, like Robert De Niro in Cape Fear, <laughs> like just, <laughs> just out loud, just like, ah, ah, just, just let it go. Um, but I mean, I, I I will be I will be straight here. I think this I think this is the comedy of the summer. Um I don't remember seeing a comedy at all this summer that made me laugh this hard. Um I can't remember laughing this hard for a movie in in quite some time. Um I'll put this movie up against just about anything I've seen recently uh that has that, that has a comedy vibe to it. That's how strong I think Bad Moms is. That's how strong I will stand behind this film. Uh this is my female empowerment moment. I love bad moms. <laughs> Great. So, so, so with that said, um, to recap, uh, the films that we talked about this week, Nerve, uh, I'm a big fan of Nerve. I think the themes and ideas are really interesting as far as uh, dealing with the internet and social media. Um, and I think the, the, the dares involved in the film uh, will get you on the hook enough to make it rather enjoyable. Uh, Courtney is a little bit less than that. She views it more as a guilty, pleasure-ish sort of movie, but she will not deny that she had a good time watching it. So yeah. so you have that uh, to hang your hat on. Um, and as far as Bad Moms, uh, I love this movie. I will watch this movie repeatedly. I may find myself quoting it to other people, uh, which may come off a little strange depending on the quote. Um, but <laughs> but uh, I think that this is the comedy of the summer. I haven't laughed this hard uh, in quite some time. And uh, my blurb, it was so funny, it literally almost made me pee my pants two times. <laughs> so there's that. And uh, for Courtney... Marketing's going to love you. <laughs> yeah, they, they, should, they should put that on the poster. Uh, hey, they might. They and, might send your quotes into the right person. They might. <laughs> and uh, and for Courtney, she also found it pretty enjoyable. Not to my level, um, but she's a big fan of Bad Moms as well. So uh, so uh, overall, two two films that that we will both yeah, agree it's not on. A bad week. No, yeah, a, a it's pretty, not a bad week. A pretty strong week. And um and look, Jason Bourne is out there. If, if you want to see it. But I'm pretty sure there's three other films that are just like that one that you've already Honestly, seen. I think you're going to have more fun at either Nerve or Bad Moms than you will at Born. See? So there you go. So yeah. take take that one to the box office. Um, before I let you go, Courtney, let everybody know where it is they could find you out there on the interwebs. Yeah. Um, so you can either find me at freshfiction.tv or sassymamainla.com. Or you can also find me on in my 140 character quips on uh, Twitter at Lula May Bell. So there you go. Make sure you follow all her work out there in the world. Keep up to date on Courtney's work because, well, why not? You got time on your hands. So just keep reading. That's how we get educated. Um, I am a genius. That's why. I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> oh, well, we're, we're all self appointed geniuses. So. Um, That's right. Look, with that said, uh, get out there and, I mean, you already found the podcast, but um, however you want to find the podcast, we're out there in all of your preferred podcast distribution models. So if you want to find us on iTunes, on Stitcher, Google Play, uh, Blueberry, SoundCloud, Lift Embargo is out there. So go ahead and subscribe to it however it is that you choose. This way you can get the show delivered directly to your phone or your tablet. You never miss an episode or any 
movie that we discuss. So take care of that. Make sure you subscribe and like or rate the show. So, uh, or if there's comments available, go ahead and do that. If we're a five-star show, give us five stars. If we're a one-star show, you put that one star on somebody else's show because I don't need it. Um, and, <laughs> and comments, that's also important. Let us know feedback as well, how we're doing, what you think of the show. That helps for placement of the show on all the models. So you could find the podcast anywhere out there in the world. Uh, also on Twitter, make sure you find us, first of all, at Tis Infamous. That's the mothership of This Is Infamous. And you can follow me as well at Infamous Kid, two Ds at the end, for all my random ramblings and musings and my stream of consciousness put into the written word or, in, or under 140 characters. So make sure you do it there. But also at Tis Infamous, like I said, that's where you can be notified all the time when a brand new show goes up as well. Over on Facebook, two pages for you to like, facebook.com slash Tis Infamous and facebook.com slash Billy the Kid. Make sure you participate in all the discussion threads that go up there. Always really compelling and interesting stuff. Uh, and you can follow my work regularly at joeblow.com as well as thisisinfamous.com. So I want to thank my guest this week, Courtney Howard, thank you very much for coming on and doing this show and talking yeah. about these two films with me. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Lot of fun. Uh, I've been your host, Billy Donnelly. This has been The Lifted Embargo. Go out there and watch a movie. Find something good that you really like because if you look hard enough, you will find something that will entertain you. Until next week, talking more movies. I'm out for now. Have a pleasant, immediate future. Peace. <coughs> The Lifted Embargo is a podcast presentation of This Is Infamous.